Hey guys, welcome back. This is Deepesh from Freshersworld.com. Uh, we had a great response for our uh, Kotlin series. So thank you for your response on our uh, Kotlin series. So this will be the first program uh, that we'll be checking out in Kotlin. So basically we'll be following uh, the Kotlin guideline for uh, this tutorials. So basically we start with variables, we start with functions and we just uh, see all the functionalities of Kotlin going forward. So now I have installed my Kotlin IDE that is IntelliJ IID and also have Eclipse. So this initial tutorials helps you to understand the difference between the IDEs and also like uh, to understand how to create project in Kotlin and also in Eclipse. So basically uh, I close the existing project of my Eclipse. So I start my Eclipse again. So my first project is already created. So I'll just show you how to create a new project in Kotlin. So I go to new project, Kotlin platform, console application, next. So it's, uh, it is asking me for the Java version. So I say, okay. So you can see the difference between the main function generated by Kotlin and the Java. So basically the, we have a public static void main and we have main method here so basically we have a keyword called fun which is appended to the functions so we'll be discussing more on the functions in the upcoming videos just i just want you guys to see the difference between the main method in java and well as in kotlin so here you can see public static void main and we have uh, an argument which is of uh, type array strings the same thing is here in case of kotlin that's an array of strings and the arguments is declared like this Everyone wants to go to IIT or IIM in India because who doesn't want good jobs and salary? An average IIT or IIM graduate has at least one good job offer after college. But you should also have this opportunity because your skills define your career, not your degree or resume. Thanks to Relevel by Anakami, you can get placed in the top companies in India purely on the basis of your skills. Actually, Relevel has delivered 1000 job offers in less than a year. This is higher than what single IITs or IIMs can offer in a year. Yes, top companies provide the best jobs across India through one platform. More than 60 crores worth of jobs has been delivered from Relevel till today. You're just one test away from your dream job. You can take jobs in 11 different categories like sales, tech, product management, HR through Relay2. Book your slot for the test by going today. The link is there in the description. Now there are also Relevel courses available for you. Be it fresher or working professional in all 11 test categories you can upskill yourself for it. This is the best time to invest in your career. You have access to a platform that can help you upskill with the best courses and provide you with the best job that you deserve. All you have to do is go to the course section on Relevel and fill the admission form, speak with your allotted academic counselor, understand more about the course of your interest and what will be expected from you, get your offer letter within a few days, pay your fees and instantly start your journey towards a better career. Remember one thing, the link is there in the description, right away book your slot. All the best from the Relevel team, 800 plus companies are waiting for you. So now uh, we'll just see whether this is working and I'll just add system.out.println here. Okay, so I'll run my Kotlin program first. So it's still building like it's still running. It takes little time for the initial project to build in Kotlin. So we can just check the output of Eclipse and then see, we can see the output of Java program that's hello. So we have a simple main function and then we are just trying to print hello. Now we have the same in Kotlin and we have it in a different way. Like the syntax is different. We'll see, we'll be seeing more on how to create functions and what are these things going forward. It takes little time whenever you are doing it for the first time. So indexing the JDK. So we all know that uh, in Java we declare a string using a data type. String name is equal to the bash. And end with the semicolon. So now if I want to print this name, I use the same system dot 
out dot println but instead of hello i'll print name so let's see the output yes so we have hello and the page the same thing we'll be seeing in kotlin as well so in kotlin we don't declare the data type explicitly so basically we have something called var it has a keyword and you can declare name equals to the page so now yes the project is now built so I declared uh, a variable name and the value is the page. So we'll just see how does this work. So we don't use system.out.println, we just use println to print it in a new line and I say name. So again, we don't have, we don't need to have the semicolon. So you can see the difference between a Java program and a Kotlin program. So basically we don't use a data type uh, for, for the uh, variable that we use. So Kotlin default, takes the data type of what we have uh, declared it here. So basically I have declared a string. So the name will be of type string. So again, if I want to have a data type, which is integer, I say number. So I can pass one, two, three, four, five. Now, if I print my number, so you can see it's one, two, three, four, five now. So here is the output. So basically you don't have to explicitly say the data type in Kotlin and we use a keyword called var to declare the variable. Now, if you want to declare the data type externally, so we, you can declare it as string. So, so basically the difference is the string, here we use the string name is equal to the page. So I am declaring the data type of the variable name and then assigning the value. So here we just take the variable name in front of it, we declare the data type. So basically you can just see the difference we, here in Java, we declare it towards the left and here in Kotlin, we declare the data type towards the right of it using a semicolon. So now I execute this, you can again see the output, the page and one, two, three, four, five. Now one important keyword that we have in uh, Kotlin is val. So val is another data type which is used in Kotlin. Using val, you can also cre try to create variables and assign a value to it. So basically, if I create a new variable as my phone number, number, I can assign 9009009009. So basically, I'll just print the value of the phone number. We'll see what's the difference between val and var going forward. But now, for now, yeah. So I can use print and as well as println. <coughs> so for println, it just prints in a new line and I want to print everything in a new line. So I have, yeah, I have my phone number. So one important difference between val and var is basically a val is immutable. So if I want to change the value of phone number to some other value, uh, say 8888, the compiler would don't, the compiler would not let me do that. So this is, uh, this, this, so this is taken care by the compiler during the compile time. So a variable which is declared with val is, is immutable. A variable which is declared using var is mutable. So I'll be showing you when to use val and var. What I want you guys to understand in this video is we have two types of keywords that is var and val to declare uh, variables and assign value to it. So we use var where we, it is mutable and you can change the name to a different name now. So you can make it as such in and then I'll print it out. Whereas when you try to use val and then try to change the value, you will not be able to do it. So it's an immutable uh, string. So basically when to use val and var, I'll be telling in the upcoming videos, but one important thing that Kotlin comes up with val and var, uh, both is something called null safety operation. So, so basically in Java, one of the most pain point is handling null pointer exceptions. So in, in Kotlin, we have something, we have an operator question mark, which helps us to uh, overcome this drawback. So basically if I want to, if I have my variable name and I'm trying to assign it with null. So it says like, no, you cannot assign null to a variable 
uh, in Kotlin. So basically, if you still feel that there might be chances that the variable can still take null, you have to explicitly say it using the question mark operator. So basically, now it lets you define null. So you cannot define any variables which can which can be null if you want to have if in case you think there can be null for this variable at some point in a condition then you have to add question mark to it so basically now i can assign null so basically we don't assign null to any of the variables that we want to create but kotlin explicitly tells us that you cannot assign nulls so whenever we are trying to do something and then we by mistake we try to initialize it to null the kotlin uh, compiler tells us you are trying to assign null unless you have not explicitly told that this variable name can be assigned null. So this is very important feature of Kotlin and this is the most uh, important interview question that is asked between val and var and also what is the uh, meaning of question mark operator uh, when you when declaring variables using val and var. So next I'll be showing you when to use and when to use val. So this is my first program. I'll just try to comment it for now. Now I, let, let me take a uh, program to swap two variables. So I want to swap a, so, uh, so I declare var a is equal to 10, var b is equal to 20. So I declare another val c. So this is, immutable so here it says something the variable uh, must have must have annotator or should be initialized so basically i initialize if i start initializing it to zero then uh, it does not let me to change the value so i just say question mark to this as well i'll say integer type and say question mark so now it lets me uh, declare or initialize the value later at some point so my idea is to swap two variables so now, if I want to change A and B's value, so I want this variable A and variable B to be immutable, but I'm using C as just a container, like to keep the temporary value. So this is something like my store A or B and then use it for swapping. In this case, you can use val. So basically, you, if you if in a place that you just assign it and you don't change it, in that case, you can use val. So the best scenario is when you are swapping two numbers, like you can use val. So it's immutable. So basically, if I want to now change uh, uh, a to a and b with new different values, but I'll just print what's the value of a and b first. So I print a, no semicolon again, b, and for now, I'll just run. So you can see 10 and 20 because it's just printing in, it's not printing in new line. So now I have 20 and 20, 10 and 20. So now I have 20. So now I have 10 and 20. So basically now if I want to exchange the variables, you all know the logic of swap. So basically I take C and I take whatever is the value in A. I assign, so whatever is the value in A, I'll assign it to C. So now my val is defined. So A is defined. So now I can just use C to exchange it to B. So now I'll just uh, change my A to have B. This is a lot. Now I'll have my B to have C. So now I'll just print A and B. Now let's see. So I say print LN after changing so now in this case like the use case is basically to explain that whenever you use val it should not be editable so in this case i'm not uh, i'm just assigning a value a to c so in this case i'm just using c i don't have any intentions of changing c in this case like whether you want to initialize a static variable and you feel that you don't want to change it or you want to make it final in case of java in that case you can use val so i run now so you can see like value of a before is 10 and and b was 20 now it's 20 and 10 so like this is one simple scenario where you can use val so it's very important you to understand like when to use val and when to use val so this simple example demonstrates like when you should uh, really use val and when you really want to use var. 
So this is our first video. Going forward, we'll just see how to initialize a method in Kotlin. So we'll just see that in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much. Thank you.